What is up, hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack all of our Web3 education. If you guys are brand new here, be sure to be subscribed for all the fire videos coming this year. Now, I took a quick break for about a month on paternity leave, had a daughter, and it's really great to be back. Now, on this episode, I wanted to cover a question that has come up dozens and dozens of times over the last couple of months. It is what Bitcoin ordinals are. And I'm really excited to dig into this today. So if you guys like Bitcoin, be sure to slap a like on this video, leave a comment below what you think about ordinals. And if you think that it is going to be as as impacting to the space as all these other people are speculating. Now, first and foremost, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, exist on tons of different blockchains. Famously, Ethereum and Solana are the most popular by far. Now, other ones like Base by Coinbase is really picking up a lot of steam, a lot of momentum. They're like minting their quarterly earnings on base. It's really exciting to see all the different use cases for NFTs. But back to Bitcoin. Each Bitcoin can be broken into 100 million Satoshis. It's just going to be mined as traditional blocks are mined by the Bitcoin miners using proof of work, Satoshis. It's going to be encrypted with a number that represents that ordinal. That's really how this mechanism works. Really important thing to think about how NFTs can use the Bitcoin network without side chains, without third parties, keeping that decentralization and that security of the Bitcoin network. The biggest difference and the biggest value to Bitcoin ordinals and all the haters out there that have been talking about how this will be like spam email for Bitcoin really don't quite understand and can't wrap their head around that Bitcoin is the biggest computer network to ever exist and getting access to something that is immutable and very, very secure and decentralized like the Bitcoin network is going to be utilized in different ways. Like people are just gonna use it in different ways all over the course of history. So it's important to just realize that innovation is gonna to happen to something like the Bitcoin network, whether you like it or not. It is decentralized and that is a beautiful thing. It allows people to do things on it and create awesome innovations on there. So Bitcoin Ordinals is storing data for these different NFTs on chain. Unlike a lot of the other networks, most of them like Ethereum, they are being stored off chain. So, you know, things on like AWS and using all these different third party applications People are storing things elsewhere, but on Bitcoin, since it's so powerful, you are able to get it in, inscripted in these individual Bitcoin blocks, unlike the other chains. So it's really exciting. That's the key differentiator here. And that's why I love it so much. I'm really eager to see games come onto the Bitcoin blockchain. I know that sounds cringe to all the Bitcoin maxis out there. But it is going to be really cool to see how this is utilized. When you have storage actually on chain, each one of these blocks has that encryption for the Satoshi that is correlated to the NFT. It's really, really cool to think that how this is going to scale. So what is an example of the Bitcoin ordinal? There was a big transaction, the biggest that has ever taken place, called the Taproot Wizard. This was a collection, was a collaboration between Udi, who's a famous Bitcoin developer on social media, and the mining pool Luxor. So they worked together to mine this massive collection. And it's really cool to see the issuance actually happen of a collection. And this was just a legendary, legendary release. I remember following it closely because I was really interested to see if it would actually have higher fees and congest the network. And it didn't really do that. From my experience, I was watching it. If it could congest the network, similar to how CryptoKitties just bogged down Ethereum in 2017. So ordinals are also a fun thing to think about on the long term. I had this conversation recently with a couple fellow econ majors about how eventually Bitcoin will lose the mining rewards because all the Bitcoin will be mined in 2140, I believe. So over 100 years out, but ultimately all of it will be mined. And the incentive there is transaction fees or where the miners are going to make money. But with ordinals involved, there is more incentives over the long term. If we're thinking over 100 years, this will enable people to make more money over the long term using Bitcoin as the network. So it's really exciting to see different types of innovations happening to the Bitcoin network and thinking long-term, thinking hundred years out, we're thinking about how these are going to be utilized to generate more money, keep miners incentivized. My favorite part of the sort of heated debate that's going on is the different mining and having epochs that are involved. So when the halving happened last month in April of 2024, there's going to be a lot of interesting concepts around what happens with the ordinals from the previous epoch before the halving. What happens with them? Are they more valuable than the ones that are in this next four year increment before the next halving? And I love the idea of creating scarcity based on different timelines like that. And there's so many cool things that are going on around the metadata. And I remember Jimmy ETH back in the day when we went to NFT NYC in 2019. I remember talking to him about metadata and he created something called Avastars. This was the first ever metadata being stored on chain on Ethereum. And I think that this is such a cool thing that's being brought to Bitcoin because now it's just large scale. 
people were all sort of talking about how it wasn't going to scale on Ethereum and the storage was really what was going to bog things down. So how do you buy and sell different Bitcoin ordinals? OKX, one of my favorite exchanges. I've been friends with them for a long time. This isn't a sponsored review or anything. You can go over there and trade ordinals. Also, there are other marketplaces that are popping up. You can go on and check people's collections that they're doing. And of course you can see it on chain, but the ordinals wallet is available out there. So you can go there, give it a Google, be careful where you're going, where you're doing your research. But ultimately OKX, I found to be a very trustworthy organization that you can go to and research this and learn more about it. So you can buy, sell and trade ordinals there and people are crushing it with these things. It's important to know that the argument and the heated debate around where this data is being stored is winning for the people that are doing these ordinals collections. They're crushing it, absolutely crushing it. So I think that the lower fee chains that are doing minting and things like that on their, their own proof of stake networks are always going to be relevant, but the proof of work concept is a beautiful thing to see what's gonna happen over a long period of time. This is a huge experiment. It's important to know that. So I'm really excited to see that the Bitcoin network is being utilized in a different way. I'm excited to see these collaborations between miners and developers at scale, doing these huge block transactions and just seeing all of the collaborations and efforts in the Bitcoin network is exciting. So that is it for my overview of what Bitcoin ordinals are. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like this video, share it with people that have questions around ordinals. It is a really cool concept with NFTs on the blockchain for the Bitcoin network, and it's going to empower a lot more people to get involved and use Bitcoin differently. Get their toes wet with Bitcoin. Understand that it can be divided by 100 million into the Satoshis is so fundamental to just understanding you can buy fractional pieces of one Bitcoin. And that is it. I will see you here in the next episode of Hack Crypto.